I was invited to give a little testimony about the sacrament of confirmation. So I'm, I remember in Acts chapter 1, it says, He commanded them, Do not leave Jerusalem until the Father sends the gift of the Holy Spirit upon you. In a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to explain a little bit about how that manifested in my life. The seven gifts of the Holy Spirit the church asks God for in the confirmation liturgy are wisdom, understanding, counsel, fortitude, knowledge, piety, and fear of the Lord. The catechism calls them permanent dispositions because when the Holy Spirit installs them in our heart, these messianic gifts are much more than just seven discrete spiritual abilities impacting one or two elements of what you can do. Instead, they're like a USB drive port that goes into that you can that the Holy Spirit can download information like a USB stick into. These are ways that the Holy Spirit can continually influence us at all times and places, even when we don't know it. There are many things that we may regret in our lives, big and small, but I will never regret serving Christ when I was young, never. It pays to, in addition to being intrinsically rewarding. Because I stayed in the church after my confirmation when I was about 19 years old, I experienced what it's like to have God care about me in all the different little ways in my life, as well as many big blessings that were very special. When the, when the catechism says that the sacrament of confirmation deepens someone's relationship of sonship or daughtership with God, I can relate with the experiences of care and empowerment that God, my father, has given me in my daily life. Some of them are quite small and ordinary, but others were more interesting. Even though not every parish, for example, one of the ordinary ways that we can experience this is in our parish. Even though not every parish is a perfect match for every person, I was blessed to have a perfect match made in heaven with Our Lady of Fatima, and our local discipleship community has truly become my family. And that outpouring of love really means a great deal to me. I was confirmed way back then in 2008, December. And I remember I was just so much of a believer in the Catholic Church. When I was confirmed, I had such high expectations for the way the gifts of the Holy Spirit would manifest in my life after confirmation. Still, I didn't feel anything when the priest anointed my head with oil that day or in the days after. For months, there was nothing. The only real sign that anything was different came from my parochial vicar, who one day told me that something seemed different about me over the time frame since my confirmation, even though he didn't know about the confirmation. So even though I didn't receive a dramatic sign, that was a sign that the Holy Spirit was already doing new things in me. As St. Luke beautifully shows us throughout the Acts of the Apostles, the seven gifts of the Spirit represent the gift of the, a, a broader gift of the Holy Spirit, something that enables someone to act as Christ's representative in ministry for him, taking on and continuing his ministry. In fact, Bishop Robert Barron teaches that in a real way, during confirmation, we become successors of the apostles. In my view, it is this grace that makes us able to act as other Christs. Let me give you an example of a surprising way that the Spirit manifested. Once my Christian friend brought her non-Christian stepdaughter to meet me at McDonald's while the stepdaughter was visiting after graduating high school. And this was when I was in college for undergraduate school. She seemed like she had a good heart, but I could tell she was very different than me when we started talking. I wanted to show how important and valuable the meaning of life, the answers to every part of our most pressing challenges that God had revealed to me in Catholicism were to me. So during that meeting in my head, I kept asking the Holy Spirit, please tell me what I need to say. But I still felt that my reasoning and words were completely inadequate. The Holy Spirit, however, did not want to give me a brilliant explanation, but helped me or debate, but helped me to listen to her life experiences without issuing a moral condemnation on her. Rather than clearly explaining about the church, the Holy Spirit wanted me to give 
what I had received from the Catholic Church, namely compassionate listening and an invitation to learn more. When she left that day, I thought I would never see her again. But she was so impressed by something about me that she actually came to a charismatic mass about a week later with her mother, stepmother. And remember, this was someone who never went to church and was actually into satanic music. The bottom line is that the Holy Spirit asked for a different approach than my natural skills. He asked me to use my example. And during that meeting, the Holy Spirit impressed upon her heart that there is something intensely desirable in my way of life. So that was the power of the apostolic ministry of the Holy Spirit. There's just nothing better for me than what I've gotten and what I experienced serving Christ. We are all quite vulnerable as human beings. We're experiencing our fragility more. We can get killed or hurt so easily. We're certainly not invulnerable. But there's nothing better than the peace that comes from knowing that whether I live or die, I'm going to live in happiness, whether people like me or dislike me, whether they mock me or exclude me, even within our own community sometimes. I know that God cares about every stir of my heart. When I review the key events from these last crisis-stricken few years, I'm continually amazed by how many desires God has fulfilled for me and in me. But these blessings happen because I used the gift of wisdom day to day and because I brought my will into alignment with God's will, not perfectly, not 100% of the time, but still. God, I'm struck by how many of my desires and dreams God has made into a reality because of his faithfulness. It reminds me of this powerful scripture from the book of Psalms. To the faithful, you show yourself faithful. To those with integrity, you show integrity. To the pure, you show yourself pure. But to the crooked, you show yourself shrewd. All of this happened because I was going to daily masses during my time off as an undergraduate and because I recognized that Catholicism was worth giving time and attention to. And so because I valued this specific answer to the meaning of life questions above other things, I began to see God's power manifest in my life in remarkable ways, as well as consistently every day. All those times when I tried to humble myself in my thoughts when I was just beginning this journey and not think too highly of myself, even when really were times when God, even though they were bitter, God brought so many blessings out of them. Even though there have been times of tears and trials these last few years, God's faithfulness has prevailed in my journey and my, especially in regard to my ministry, even when it seemed impossible. Thank you for listening to my reflection on confirmation. Thank you, Dana, for your wonderful experience that you shared with us. It's a beautiful, God is inspiring and also helping you to grow in the spirit and also being a great witness for God, God's ministry in the kingdom. Thank you. Luke's Gospel, chapter 11, verse 11 to 13, we hear about what father among you would hand his son a snake when he asks for a fish, or hand him a scorpion when he asks for an egg? If you then, who are wicked, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Jesus said these words, how much more the Father give you the Holy Spirit who ask him? God loves us, that love showed by sending his only son to save the humanity. John chapter three, verse 16, we hear from the scripture, but God so loved the world and he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, 
but might have eternal life. This is the promise of God to us, to all of us, eternal life. If you want to receive that eternal life and also believe in Jesus Christ to be a true soldier of God, a uh, soldier of Christ, we need life. That life comes to us through the Holy Spirit. Jesus gained for you and for me. And we hear often God saved us. And Jesus saved us through the Paschal mystery. What is Paschal mystery? Through life, death, and the resurrection. After the resurrection, Jesus said these words to his apostles. John chapter 19, Jesus said, receive the Spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit. And also, Acts chapter 1, verse 8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So when we receive the Holy Spirit, we receive the power. When we receive the power, we will be the witnesses throughout the earth. That is the promise. So this promise is fulfilled whenever our brothers and sisters, they receive the confirmation, the sacrament. We have three divisions. One, sacraments of uh, initiation and healing and service. Sacrament of initiation, baptism, confirmation, Eucharist. And sacrament of healing, confession and anointing. Sacrament of service. We see marriage and also priesthood. But now, so why we call baptism and confirmation and also Eucharist as the sacraments of initiation. We see in the next slide about the why we call that. The sacraments of initiation are baptism, confirmation, and the Eucharist. They are the foundations of the Christian life. They are the foundations of the Christian life. They are closely related. In each we receive the Holy Spirit and his gifts. Each has its special symbols and effects. That is why these three sacraments we call sacraments of initiation. And about the sacrament, Catechism of the Catholic Church, 1285. Uh, says the reception of the sacrament of confirmation is necessary for the completion of the baptismal grace. For by the sacrament of confirmation, the baptized are more perfectly bound to the church and are enriched by a special strength of the Holy Spirit. So this is an encouragement and this is a truth the church teaches through the catechism of the Catholic Church. So this is necessary to complete the baptismal grace. So that is why it is very important to receive the confirmation. So in the beginning, when we see the history about the confirmation, the first four centuries, in the beginning, baptism, to the altar, to the Eucharist. So there will be one when the believers, they receive the, when they receive the baptism and then from the water and then they lay the hands upon on them and also they pray for the gift of the Holy Spirit. And finally, they also receive the communion, Eucharist. It is like, one thing, the beginning, first and second and third centuries. 
but the fourth century when the religious freedom happened in the catholic church and slowly it changed into a different way each one they separated baptism in the beginning and again a confirmation again we are eucharist but we we see the church history about the sacrament but what do you find in the bible where do you find it in the bible so in the sacrament of confirmation the baptized person is sealed with the gifts of the holy spirit and is strengthened for the for the service to the body of christ so that is why it is important and we are completely become catholics and again with that we also received the seal of the holy spirit so if you go to the acts of apostle chapter 8 verse 14 to 18 so in the bible we see over the sacrament of confirmation so now when the apostles in jerusalem heard that samaria had accepted the word of god they sent them peter and john who went down and prayed for them that they might receive the holy spirit for it had not yet fallen upon any of them they had only been baptized in the name of the lord jesus then they laid hands on them and they received the holy spirit so we see uh, some of the believers in samaria and they received the baptism they accepted uh, when they heard the scripture they accepted christ and received baptism but then so from jerusalem peter and john they were sent to confirm them so when they laid their hands and prayed and they received the holy spirit from the scripture we find this is a promise of god and we we hear from the old testament the book of joel chapter 2 verse 20 we hear the promise supernatural gift of the holy spirit i will pour my spirit upon all mankind i will pour my spirit upon all mankind through the prophet god gave this promise to us so this is a father promised spirit and jesus also talked about it matthew chapter 3 verse 11 john the baptist says one who is coming after me is mightier than me who am i and i'm not worthy to carry his sandals he will baptize you with the holy spirit and fire this is what john the baptist said about jesus he will baptize you with the holy spirit and fire and jesus he also uh, instructed about the holy spirit john chapter 14 and also 15 16 and acts of apostles chapter 1 or uh, 5 to 8 uh, we hear about jesus talking about the holy spirit comforter advocate and helps you and reminds you and also help you to understand what is sin what is judgment and what uh, is a life so reminds you and helps you to understand so through the sacrament of confirmation we receive the greatest gift of the holy spirit and the holy spirit is a promise of the father to the mankind that is why jesus explained to the apostles and not only this, this is limited for the apostles we hear luke chapter 11 13 whoever asks which means every believer uh, whoever ask and uh, during the pr- uh, prayer when you ask God is going to bless you with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Jesus also spoke about that when you receive the Holy Spirit your joy will be doubled. So he asked the father 
for the gift of the Holy Spirit. You ask the Father, so your joy will be uh, doubled. We receive the peace within our soul and in our heart. So at the Pentecost, what happened, there are Jewish people, there are pagans, Gentiles, that all they receive the uh, Holy Spirit. So that is what we hear, the comforter, the advocate, the power, the spirit. Uh, apostles they receive, Gentiles they receive, Acts of Apostle chapter 10 verse 19, and Jewish people they received. So they all became one spiritual family. So for God there is no partiality. He showed his love, unconditional love, his mercy because of that, this special gift, because without the Holy Spirit, there is no life in the church. Without the Holy Spirit, there is no life within us. So without the Holy Spirit, uh, so we die spiritually. That is why the promise is for all mankind. Apostles they receive, Gentiles they receive, Jewish people they receive. It's the greatest gift. Amen. Praise the Lord. And we see a right of confirmation. Requirements to be confirmed. We have to reach the age of reason. And also before receiving the confirmation, and uh, we have to go for the uh, confession if you are in the state of mortal sins. So during the uh, confirmation before that, I prepare the students and help them to go for the confession and I make sure that they receive it. And also freely ask for the sacrament. It is not by force. So since my parents uh, want me to be confirmed, I am here to be confirmed. Since my uh, grandparents, they want me to confirm, so because of that, I am here. There are some people without understanding, so it looked like a, uh, any study, or uh, we, we, we study in the schools and colleges. It looked like some, so every student, all the other students, they are receiving, okay, let my child to receive this, it's a good thing. So it will be useful, the certificate will be useful. So don't receive the confirmation for the sake of certificate. Don't receive confirmation for the sake of just I received, I'm okay with that. But it is not by force, it is our free will, willing to accept this sacrament because at the baptism, it is your parents and our godparents, they say yes to God in behalf of you. That is what happens. They say, we do believe, we believe, because you are a child. Then when you are grown up, before receiving the confirmation, it is you who have to stand up and say, yes, I need it, I want it. So then be ready to live your life as a disciple of Christ. So, so much blessing is given to us. We forget about that. Uh, when we, uh, we receive the baptism and confirmation, all the sacraments, so much God gave us because he loves us. He cares for our soul. He cares for our life. That is why this gift, the Holy Spirit, so will help you to be a true disciple of Christ. We say, did you know who's who in confirmation? So ordinary minister, bishop, he can give priest permission to confirm. In the case emergency, if sometimes needed, so bishop gives permission. During the COVID time, bishop gave permission to priest to confirm, but usually, he is a bishop who gives the uh, confirmation and also a confirmation candidate and again a sponsor. So during the time of baptism, we have 
godparents. They are the one who take the responsibility of the person that we care for the spiritual things for this child. But now sponsor also responsible and also support the person who received the confirmation. Essential parts of the sacrament of confirmation. Anointing of the forehead with the chrism and the laying on of the minister's hands with the words, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. These are the main things. So even we have the mass, everything, readings and everything, we are going ahead as a uh, person so to receive the anointing on our forehead with the chrism and also laying our, our minister's hands and saying, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. We are sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. And there are water and oil. So in confirmation, a baptized person is anointed with chrism consecrated oil and strengthened with the Holy Spirit. So when we receive baptism, we also uh, through the waters and again, there will be oils used for that. But in confirmation, we don't use the water, but it is chrism oil. So this is something adds to the gift of new life we received in baptism deepens and seals in the gifts of the Holy Spirit that we receive in baptism and chrism symbolizing the power of the Holy Spirit which keeps us close to the Father and Son and also sends us out strengthened to carry on church's mission. So this is what happens when you receive the seal of the Holy Spirit, and uh, we are renewed with the power of the Holy Spirit. We receive that power. We receive the strength. We receive all the uh, gifts of the Holy Spirit and fruits of the Holy Spirit. They are, uh, they are there with you. Sometimes we forget. Sometimes we neglect. But they are within you. Never forget your anointing that God uh, blessed you with this confirmation. And we see about the, I, I talked about anointing with oil. So in the Old Testament, all the prophets, when they went to uh, so prepare the, the kings or priests, they anointed, them with oil. And we see Psalm 23 verse 5. It is David's psalm. David who said, you anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. So this is something coming from the Old Testament. So the oil that we used during the time of confirmation and we are uh, consecrated. We are anointed. So that is what uh, we, we also see one of the things during the time of confirmation that bishops, so he, with the oil, he anoints us with the sign of the cross. And we want to explain to you about something about these oils. In the left of the baptismal font, you will notice a cabinet hanging on the wall. It's a cabinet, is, uh, it is called embrace. It contains all of the holy oils. So many churches we find. So one tabernacle where uh, the Eucharist we keep there. The other thing we see, uh, embrace. So that is a small, look like a tabernacle, but it is not a tabernacle, a little box and a little box where they keep this 
holy oils. So these three they use in the Catholic Church for the sacramental reasons. We have seen every bottle they have some kind of uh, letters we say O S and O I and S or C. So what does it mean? The first one is the oil of salvation, the oil of catechumenate. And again, the second one, uh, O-I, the oil of the infirm, or the oil of sick. So anointing of the sick, they use that for that. And the first one they use during the time of baptism. And again, anointing of the sick, they use the second one. The last one, uh, uh, sacred chrism. They also use during the time of baptism and more they also use during the time of, uh, uh, time of uh, confirmation or ordination and all the, the times. These are, these are the differences between all the oils that we use in the, uh, in the liturgy, in the Catholic Church, these three things. This I want to explain to you a little bit about that. So why anointing with oil? So we see a sacrament of anointing in the church that we discuss when we are talking about that. But we hear in the book of James chapter uh, 5 and 14 to 16. Is any sick among you? Let them call for the elders of the church and let them pray over them, anoint with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of the faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise them up. And if they have uh, committed sins, their sins are forgiven. It's a beautiful uh, sacrament, anointing of the sick. They use the oil, but uh, as a priest like 20 years, I have anointed many people. I've seen a lot of miracles happening. God healing them. God touching them through the sacrament. Because it is Jesus who sent his apostles. And here we see anointing the, uh, with the oil. A woman, she anointed the feet of Jesus here. And Jesus also during his ministry, he sent his apostles Go and anoint them, anoint them. So this is what happens during the anointing. The power of the Holy Spirit comes to us. And again, uh, why? So oil is a sign of abundance of grace and joy. Oil is a sign of cleansing and healing. Oil in the confirmation is a sign of consecration. By the anointing, you will receive the mark or seal of the Holy Spirit. So that is why uh, we receive the seal or mark of the Holy Spirit by through this anointing. So there are five effects of the confirmation. Five effects of the confirmation. So child of God, number one. Roots us more deeply as children of God. Through the confirmation, we deeply feel within our soul, within our heart, that we are the children of God. And we call Abba Father, our Father who art in heaven. So, so we feel more daughter and son of God more. And again, closer to Christ, unites us more closer to Jesus Christ. Through the confirmation, it happens, the second thing. And again, gifts of the Holy Spirit we receive. So the knowledge, wisdom, for what we are living our life. And during the time when you are facing certain things, it is the wisdom and it's the gifts of the Holy Spirit help you to be patient and to help you to have the self-control, help you to have true devotion. So that is why, so we have, through the sacrament, we receive them, but the more we neglect them, what happens, 
slowly we lose the strength of that. But if you are uh, praying, you are trying to learn more things about the sacrament and understand what exactly why God loves so much. That is why through the sacraments, God is blessing. There is no partiality. There is no partiality. He loves us so much. That is why the Holy Spirit given to the apostles, given to the Jewish people, given to the Gentiles, everyone will become one family and we become the children of God and the Holy Spirit, the gifts and everything needed for us to be, uh, to fight against the evil, the battle and to overcome the sin and everything. And so that is why uh, it will also help us to be fully Catholic, uh, render our bond with the church, the body of Christ, so mystical body of Christ, the Catholic church. When you receive that, you also uh, have to experience that we are in the mystical body of Christ. That is why we are the part of the, uh, St. Paul explains in his letter, we are the parts of the body of Christ. So that is why the more you understand your call, your vocation, you, you understand the more we committed our life to God. And again, we see uh, def uh, defend the faith gives us a special strength to spread and defend the faith as true witnesses of Christ. So in the in the world, there are many evil they attack, but you have, you have that faith, we can also defeat them. These are all the five things. Just to, uh, in conclusion, I want to talk with you. So you will feel more the gift that we are not alone in the world. We have God, the spirit. We have the father in heaven. We have Jesus, our redeemer. We have the Holy Spirit who strengthens us, who gives the true wisdom, help us, courage uh, given to us. The courage is given to us because the Holy Spirit, the power given to you. So that is why being conscious of those gifts, being conscious of how much God loved us through this sacrament. We, we do experience it when sometimes uh, it may be taking time for us. But the more we try to understand, the more the sacraments will help you to be more closer to church, closer to the uh, Lord our God. And two examples I want to give you from the scripture, what happens. This is what uh, Jesus uh, received the baptism. So Mark chapter one, verse 10, we hear, on coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens being uh, turned open and the spirit like a dove descending upon him. So this is the uh, baptism of the Lord. Jesus received the baptism. So he didn't commit any sin, he didn't need, but being uh, completely human, completely God, and he wanted to be in the part of, you know, so he showed an example and also being there, what happened, the Holy Spirit came upon him uh, like a dove descending upon him. So after that, what happened, Jesus began his public ministry. So before that, uh, he was preparing silently in prayer. And uh, when he received that, so what happened after 40 days of his fasting and prayer in the wilderness and after that, Jesus went to the temple. And when Jesus went to the temple, they have handed over him a scroll of uh, the book of prophet Isaiah chapter 61. And we hear Jesus reading that, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the afflicted, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, release to the prisoners, 
to announce a year of favor from the Lord and a day of vindication by our God to comfort all who mourn. So these are the words Jesus read. After reading that, all the people in the synagogue, their eyes fixed on Jesus. When their eyes fixed on Jesus, Jesus said by hearing, this prophecy is fulfilled. This prophecy is fulfilled. So what happened? After the baptism, after Jesus received the Holy Spirit, he began his ministry and he began uh, preaching the scripture, uh, word of God and also doing all the healings and being a great, uh, the, that people experience God's presence or uh, people experience the, during the ministry. It is Jesus, our Lord, our Savior. They, their eyes were opened by seeing all the things happening, raising the dead and healing the leper and also raising the paralytic, all kinds of healings. And the ministry became so active after receiving. So this is something uh, these days uh, missing in our life. So sometimes um, we miss uh, some of the students or some of the uh, confirmed. What happened, it looked like a graduation. It pains my heart when I see a young people coming to receive the confirmation. After the confirmation, they disappear from the scene. So after the confirmation, they are supposed to be more active in the church activities. Uh, after the con con uh, confirmation, they should be witnesses uh, for God's love, forgiveness. Instead of that, what is happening? Uh, they disappear. They think that, okay, we received this, we, we got the certificate and we are good now. And uh, that is, uh, something happens, but here the life of Jesus is the best example for us to understand. So the ministry, the true ministry began. The second thing, the day of the Pentecost, they were all in one place together and suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind and it filled the entire house in which they were. Acts chapter 2, 1 and 2. We see um, the picture that Mother Mary and the apostles and the other people, 120 people, they received the Holy Spirit. After receiving the Holy Spirit, happened, what happened? Uh, they received the power. Other side, we see apostles, they are preaching the, the word of God and being a great witness. Even the people who are uh, timid, uh, they, are, they are like uh, afraid of the world. But after receiving the Holy Spirit, they became courageous. That is what happened when Peter, when he said a, a girl came to him uh, before the receiving of the Holy Spirit, during the time Jesus was going uh, towards the cross, are you the disciple of Christ? It is Peter who said, I don't know who he is. I don't know who he is. But after receiving the Holy Spirit, what happened? He stood in front of the 3,000 people and he said, I know him. I know him. I experienced him. I saw he, is, uh, he was risen. So only the salvation through Jesus the preaching of the apostles became so powerful, so active. This is what, we are, when we receive the Holy Spirit, you should become more active. Uh, recently, I read uh, something about uh, um, Pope Francis talking about this uh, confirmation. So confirmation is not the uh, so sacrament of goodbye. Goodbye to the Lord and to the church, goodbye to the mass and the sacraments. It is the sacrament of hello, hello to the new life, and a hello to the uh, witnessing Christ 
in the community. This is what uh, Pope Francis says. It is not a sacrament of goodbye. But what is happening? Since we don't understand this uh, power and uh, teaching and everything, so some, some of the, uh, those who are confirmed, just we neglect things. So it is dangerous for our soul, danger for our life. We cannot defend our faith instead of that the evil one defeat us. And we also see this great sacrament, like Jesus, you are being anointed with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit keeps you connected to Jesus and make you like him. And also Holy Spirit will guide you to accept your true vocation as a priest, as a married person, or as a, a single. So your vocation in the society, the Holy Spirit will guide you and help you. So I hope uh, by learning this class, uh, understand the greatest gift that God gave us without partiality, giving us uh, every time when you ask, you receive it, the joy will be doubled. The presence of God you can experience every day of your life when you are being conscious of this greatest gift of the sacrament. Amen. I just had a comment, this is Diana, that I wanted to make about my first confession since I know that's part of confirmation. And I just wanted to share how I chose uh, Padre Pio for my confirmation saint and he had as many know a gift of reading souls so i prayed and i asked him for advice on my first confession because i was really petrified about going the first time and it was very very new to me and um so i prayed about it and before the day of the first confession came i got this one word very clearly in my mind and it was resentment and when it came, it, I didn't feel bad about it or, or guilty or ashamed. I just felt this is so true, but I never realized that before that I'm harboring resentment. And so when I went to my first confession, I confessed that. I also confessed um, anything else like that was taught to the class. But I think if I would have just gone with the one thing that St. Padre Pio gave me, I would have been just wonderful too. But um, so that's a, a tip for confession. I also am going to put through chat a tip from Padre Pio about confession and how to discern when what you feel um, about what you've done is something that the, the devil is irritating you about and something that the Holy Spirit gives you. When the Holy Spirit gives it to you like he did me, there isn't any bad feelings with it, and there's only peace and understanding of it. So I'm going to put that through chat for everybody to look at, and I'll let somebody else talk. Yeah, we receive the power. Power gives the courage to be witness for the kingdom of God. And I just wanted to add that when I did talk to my friend, I didn't say a whole lot, but I did stand up and not like um, say, yes, I agree with her about her pro-abortion and all the things that she was in favor of. So the Holy Spirit, even though it wasn't an aggressive type, did enable me to stand strong and defend my faith, not in a, just by not agreeing with her, because sometimes you feel pressure to agree with people on things that are considered culturally um, Yes. Thank you, Diana. Thank you, Dana. And uh, you're welcome to ask if you have some questions. I try to answer. Hi, Father. Um, I, I just want to make sure that I'm understanding um, everything here because one of the biggest questions I've been plagued with myself um, is trying to figure out how confirmation affects everybody so differently. Like there, there's myself whom I've always desired confirmation, even since I was a young child, but it didn't happen till later into my adulthood. And 
you know, it happened just like you read in, in, in scripture, you you get hit with those gifts and you, you take off running, you go, take off running with Christ and you're living for him. And you want to do everything according to the will of God and try to surrender as, as much of yourself as you're, as you're going to do. Um, but then there's others who it's kind of the complete opposite. Like you said, it, it, it's not a, a hello to them. It's a goodbye, um, goodbye to the church. Um, and I've seen that, like how people can be on one side of the pole and, the, and then on the other, it's like polar opposites. Um, and I'm not sure if I missed it or maybe I just misunderstood it. Is it ill preparation on the, the student's part and what their understanding of it is? Or what do you have to say as far as like, what's that disconnect where everybody receives that on that different polar? Yeah. Confirmation, uh, all the things, the effectual uh, effects of the confirmation, everything is there. The, it is given and it is there within everybody. But uh, the thing is, it's like uh, every person is responsible for his life. So, for example, uh, you want to comfort this class. So, you have to take time and uh, be ready to attend in this class. No, I don't need, uh, I don't need, I can read somewhere, I can. So that is like a freedom given to each person. So that, that is a part like uh, some people, some students, if they don't understand exactly what uh, the meaning of the uh, confirmation, this is disappearing from the scene. It's a pain, it pains me a lot. So not only me, many priests, many priests, uh, they express about their feeling about that. Why after learning everything, after learning everything, uh, some of them, uh, they don't take it serious. Maybe they took it like uh, just for the sake of certificate. But Christian life is not just a certificate. Christian life is more than that. We have to live every day. What Jesus said, if you want to wish to follow me, renounce yourself, take up the cross, follow me daily. He did not say follow me once in a year, follow me during the time of baptism, uh, during the time of confirmation. But I, I try to encourage all the students, mainly those who are attending today, confirmation is not the sacrament of goodbye, it is a sacrament of renewal, sacrament of life. Continue your life with the uh, with the Lord, with the God, with God, and also with the church. It's a but uh, it's a freedom given to everyone. So how they take it, how they take it, that is important. I just say that um, being a Christian for the last over 35 years. The reason why I've never left the church is because that relationship that you find with, with Jesus is so full of satisfaction and so full of help during any time of trouble, the good or the bad times. And there's the joy of your relationship with the Lord. The joy of the Lord is your strength that you can when you can find joy in the very worst times of your life that's a supernatural gift from god so i don't the only reason i can see for people leaving behind a relationship with god and a relationship with church is because they didn't know what great blessing they were missing they never experienced it so for you that are just starting out on this journey i say stay close to God and pray a lot and talk talk a, even just a couple of minutes to Jesus every night and develop that relationship and you'll find it it's something you'll you'll never want to be or somebody you'll never want to be without I think that one of the things that happened uh to me um was that I uh never really at that young age really let got in and had a true uh, relationship with Jesus. You know, I more or less thought, you know, 
you know, that that would be, you know, I, I was more concerned, I think, with with worldly things. I think I was more concerned with um, making a lot of money, getting a good job, you know, and focusing all my time and effort on that. But I think that um, I was blessed in the sense that as I got older, I realized uh, through the through the power of power of God that those things they don't mean anything. And what happens is you get as you get closer to to God, you get more grace and you get you get a, a much better feeling inside of you about what's true happiness. And I, I would recommend for young people out there to just think about always making time for, for God every single day. Talk to Jesus like he's your friend. And uh, above all, listen. Um, and, and uh, you know, just do a little bit of meditation every day. Say some, say a, a few minutes of morning prayers, a few minutes of evening prayers. And all these things are going to make your um your 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 relationship your per close personal relationship with Jesus much stronger and through that close personal relationship with Jesus you will be a truly truly much happier person um with 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 your life and and with your future so yeah. that, that's that's my thought and this is like Jesus said and he received the Holy Spirit, your joy will be double. This is what happened, apostles, after receiving the Holy Spirit, even though they were persecuted, they were joyful because we are persecuted in the name of Jesus. We are happy to undergo this persecution because there is a gift, eternal life given to us. That's why be aware of the gifts that we receive through this sacrament. I, I, want, I don't want that you miss this important sacrament, but take it more personal, more like uh, so much. It's a lot, but I was trying to make the things a little uh, clear, a small way, but actually when I was reading and meditating about this sacrament, so much to learn, so much. I just, I only said, one drop of it, not even one drop, little bit about just explaining to you how we receive the sacrament and also what are the effects and everything, like very, uh, like some points, but actually this sacrament, mm -hmm. all our sinners became saints because of the power of the Holy Spirit. When they received, they felt it within their soul and they change their life. There is nothing that God cannot do. Everything God can do, even you are a sad person, you are a depressed person, or you are going through certain things in your life. When you uh, ask the uh, Father to send the Holy Spirit, once the Holy Spirit is within you, everything will change. A tr complete transformation takes place. What happens? So the problems that you are facing is nothing when the joy that you receive from the Holy Spirit. That is the life that we receive only through the power of the Holy Spirit. So that is why both be connected with the church and also sacraments. And these classes really help you. Uh, every, every time we learn something new, every time we learn something that God is speaking to us through these classes. To sing a song, finally. I want to sing a song. This is called uh, Telugu song, but I want to explain to you the meaning. Pavanatmuda, Pavanatmuda, Jeeva Masuku Pavanatmuda. Pavanatma in, in uh, English, it is Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, life-giving spirit. Pavanath Muda, Pavanath Muda, Jeeva Mosaku Pavanath Muda. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, life giving spirit. Vetlu Nenu, Jeevin Chalo, Denikosan Jeevin Chalo, Nerpinchu Pavanath Muda. How I have to live my life? For what I have to live my, uh, live my life? Uh, teach me, Holy Spirit. Teach me, Holy Spirit. 
it's a little little song but i want to sing for you today and then uh, so again i etlu neno prarthinchal how for what i have to pray uh, how to pray teach me the holy holy spirit we are asking the holy spirit to fill our hearts and help us to live our life meaningfully and also our prayer life will be renewed with the power of the holy spirit i'm going to sing now um pavanaatmuda pavanaatmuda jeeva masagu pavanaatmuda 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 jeeva masagu pavanaatmuda etlu nenu jeevinchali deni kosam jeevinchali nerpinchu pavanaatmuda etlu nenu jeevinchali deni kosam jeevinchali nerpinchu pavanaatmuda 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 jeeva masagu pavanaatmuda etlu nenu prarthinchali deni kosam prarthinchali nerpinchu pavanaatmuda teach me holy spirit for what i have to pray how to pray it is the holy spirit who gives you courage the strength and power to live our life more joyful and also more spiritual the holy spirit transforms our lives so much the power we experience within our soul amen okay amen amen, amen. thank you father amen 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 praise the lord amen, amen. praise the lord amen. father